Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky from Bags by Becky Mac. It's been a while and I finally found the perfect bag to make with this uh, turn lock. I have been looking for a bag. This is a special kind of turn lock. It comes out, it's a little lipstick. It goes on and matches this pattern that I created and then Renata from Your Vinyl Source printed it for me. So I just, I can't believe it. So we have the Frederica from Shambella Bags Designs and it's part of her uh, Zodiac series. Um, so I'm gonna try to make one every month. I became a member. So here's a, the one bag I made and it has, um, like I said, the latch and then you drop the handle down. These are short handles that will go on your wrist like this. And then you open it up and I put two zipper pockets in it. Um, it only calls for one, but you can't have too many pockets. And then on the back, it has a magnetic snap pocket and um, all kinds of pink hardware. It's just, it's just such a cute bag. I just, I've been waiting, like I said, for the right bag. Finally found it just to use this latch. Nothing like building a purse to match a latch, right? So we've got this one, um, and this is the video. The video is going to be on this one. I originally made this one um, for a practice bag, and I used a different, again, um, latch, and it has the same thing. This has the, the kind of a burgundy, uh, I don't even know if it's burgundy, kind of reddish with the plaid, and again, two zipper pockets, and I use gray. It has a pocket up front. A pocket in the back and I used a uh, waterproof canvas on the inside uh, fusible fleece for my uh, interfacing and then uh, silver hardware and pink hardware I'll list everything uh, in the description box below if I forget something please let me know um, if you uh, like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any comments, questions, anything I can help you with, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you're interested in either one of these bags, you can go to my website at bagsbybeckymac.com and I'll have them in there about a week. I just got these done, I put the video out. So if you're interested, look in about a week and I'll have them up. So thank you and let's get started. Okay, let's go over the pieces we're gonna need to make this bag. You're going to need flap A, just one piece on the fold, okay? You're going to need a flap B, and this one is smaller, so this will be the inside of the flap. And what I did is I cut it, because of it being directional fabric, I cut it upside down so when you open up the flap, it'll be upside right, okay? So you'll need one of each of those. And then you have to do her markings, but we'll go through that as I go. Um, I've already made a bag and some of the markings were too soon for me. So I just, I'll go along as, as the pattern goes. Um, you'll need one shoulder strap connector exterior. Now I'm going to do two zipper pockets on the inside. So I made two zipper facings. Uh, you can do however you want to do in your pocket. She, you know, she makes suggestions in the pattern. Uh, this is one strap connector, which is actually for the little bitty straps to hook the O-rings. But you do it all in one piece on the fold. You make your mark. You bring it in. You sew down both edges. And then um, they're going to cut it in four pieces. She has the measurements in there. Uh a gusset, you need two exterior gusset contrast. And what that is, is it goes inside on top of the lining and there's a drop line, which again, this is gonna be great because this is actually a drop-in lining. I don't know about you ladies, but I like a drop-in lining. <laughs> it saves the hands. So she has this, you'll fold it down and you'll make your mark on the back of each piece. Okay. Again, here is a contrast band, the lining contrast band. You'll need two of those, another drop-in lining. Fold it down and make your mark on the top of the bag. You'll need two exterior main panels. Okay, now this has some markings on it. Uh, it has the piping where you start, 
It has the drop line and it will have the female magnet. Again, I will make all the marks as I go along because uh, one of these will be the front and the back because it also has dotted lines on the pattern, okay, where you draw a line, but that will end up being on the front. So you wanna make sure you pick which one's the front because then the other magnet goes on the other side. So we'll go through all that. And then you're gonna need two exterior gussets and it tapers down. So you want where the drop line is, that's your top. So again, if you're using directional, make sure you have it right, fold it down. Okay, turn around and make your drop line. And then don't forget to clip your centers, you know, to make sure you can find all your centers. Okay, so that there, and then you also need two exterior pockets uh, and then two lining out of the same piece. So here's your exterior, and then here's your lining. I'm using waterproof canvas. Um, it's really minimal on the stabilizer uh, because if you use waterproof canvas, you don't really need to stabilize that. And I've got the pieces cut out and I'll go through that with you as well. So you'll need two of those. This is also where the marking is for the twist lock for the male part and then the magnetic snap, snap. And that's for the back pocket. Again, I'll show you all that. She also has a placement for your bag tag, which on my other bag worked out pretty good. So that's where we're gonna put it. Okay, so those are all the main exterior pieces. And then for stabilization, three pieces. Well, three, three of them you need uh, for your gusset. Again, it's tapered. And I'm using um, fleece, a fusible fleece. And it seems to work really well for the stability of the bag. Um, you need one flap. My other bag, I did two, gave it a little bit more oomph. And I like it, so that's your choice, your call. It says only one, and it explains in the pattern where to put it, okay? And then you'll need two main panel stabilizers uh, on a fold, okay? And we're gonna press all those on the pieces as we go. And then for your interior lining, I'm again, I'm doing two pieces, or two pockets, <laughs> sorry. It's been a while since I've done a video. Doing two pockets, so I cut two pieces out. Um, this is exterior main panel bottom. This is going to be the inside of your pockets that you're making. You need two of those out of your lining. Okay. And then this is the main panel and you'll need it on a fold and you'll need two pieces of those. And then your lining gusset again, two pieces of those. All right. So we've got all the pattern pieces here. And then the next thing is you're gonna need three straps, two the same size for the front part of the handle, okay? I've already made one, show you how to do the other one, okay? Then this is, I wanna call it a crossbody, but she's actually calling it a shoulder because of the way we're doing it. So this is more for the shoulder to add extra because this one here is more um, on your arm size is what I've come across, okay? So you'll need two of the regular size and then one shoulder strap. And then piping if you want to do piping. Um, I did it ahead of time, but I hadn't sewed it down. Um, but I'll show you how to do it. And this is the cord I use, and I'll have a link in the description box, okay? So you'll need two strips for piping. And then for hardware, you're going to need rivets. You're going to need four O-rings. You can either use snap rings. You need uh, two swivel hooks and two D-rings, one slider if you wanna make your strap longer and turn it into an uh, adjustable, uh, a magnetic snap. Now I have to use black, but in the colors in here, we have gold, black, and pink, so it'll all kind of mix up there. Magnet, I'm gonna use pink and black zipper with the black zipper pull, and then I'm going to use this for my turn lock. It's a little lipstick and it goes right in there and it sets, I hope you can see that. And then you just pull it out and then that's your twist lock. So we're gonna give that a shot. I've been waiting for the right bag. I believe this is it. So we're gonna, gonna give that a shot. So don't forget your bag tag and uh, I think I went over all the pieces. We'll go step by step and uh, let's get started. 
Okay, the first thing she likes you to do, if you follow the pattern, is she's gonna put your bag tag on. But uh, I'm going to get my straps done first so I make sure I have enough in the bobbin. So you have two pieces of piping, I already have one prepared. Then you're gonna have the two regular straps and then the shoulder strap. And uh, you know, I'm gonna put these together but show you with the piping, you cut your cord and uh, get that netting right there. And I put quarter inch double-sided tape down the center and just press it gently. And then I will be putting an eighth inch double-sided tape on top, then fold it over, stick it. And then I'm gonna wait to put the piping on before I sew, because I have a piping foot I'm gonna use on my cylinder arm. So I'm gonna wait for that and I'll finish that up. And then your straps, a lot of you already know how to do straps. So I won't take too much time, but you just draw the line down the center and you fold it up on both sides and then you'll fold it again and you'll run a, a seam down both sides after you fold it because you'll do this and then you fold it again, okay? So I'll show you when we get over to the sewing machine, but right now I'll prep all these and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we're gonna start working on the strap. Um, as I said, uh, you fold it in meeting the line, then you fold it again, clip it. We are gonna sew down both sides of each of the strap. Like I said, there's three of them total. So um, I'm gonna finish these up and then uh, I guess I can show you. I'm using um, Tech 70 Poly Nylon Thread uh, I have my stitches set at six. My needle size is an 18 and I'm using my narrow foot. Don't forget on a cylinder arm, you always have to hold your threads or it becomes a very hot mess. Been there, done that. Okay, I'm gonna finish the other two straps and then we'll meet back at the table. It's really pretty. Okay, the next step she wants you to do is put your bag tag on and then you're gonna take one of your lining panels with your exterior pocket and you wanna make a mark for their twist lock, okay? And I have that different one, so I had to do it a little different. What I had to do is I cut around here, and then I placed, a, screwed this into this piece here with some Decaville Heavy to give it some um, stability there because it was wobbling. And uh, I glued this piece down. So that's what I did with my turn lock. Um, she does have... Uh, tutorials out there for the turn lock she's using. A lot of you have already used turn locks, but this is what I had to come up with to make that work. So we've got this piece, and now I'm going to try <laughs> with my narrow foot and put this on. It's best she wants you to put this on first, but I thought I needed the room to work to get this up here. So I'm going to clip it and then take it over the sewing machine, and then we're going to sew it and then you're gonna put little clips in it to help it turn easy because it does have a curve to it. And then you're going to top stitch it. So we'll get all that done and um, I'll try to get it clipped. It'll have to take me a minute, but you don't need to watch all that. So then we'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, I was able to get it clipped. Just had to kind of maneuver it. Make sure your right sides are together, okay? The seam allowance is in the pattern. And uh, sew all the way across, back stitch, and then we'll go from there. Oh, 
Okay. So we clip close there. And there. And then we're going to do little snips from about here all the way over. And then we're going to turn this over, press it down, finger press it probably. And uh, then we'll top stitch it. So I'm just going to put some snips in it. Okay, and then we're going to finger press that down. And you can clip it if you want. I'm going to take it over to the table and work on it. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it uh, laying down flat. It looks like it's going to be really close to my turn lock. That's why she doesn't really want you to put it in until afterwards, but I wanted to make sure that it fits because it's a different one. I'm just going to take my time here. One thing about this machine, you can do one stitch at a time. Seems to be doing okay. All right. Whew, to me, that was the hard part. <laughs> the rest of the bag is going to be a breeze. Take it over to the table and there we go oh that looks pretty okay and we'll see what the next step is okay so now you still have an extra uh, exterior pocket and lining piece but we're going to set that aside for right now it's best to do it in the order she wants you to do it so then the next thing we're going to do is work on the strap connector real easy i won't i'll do it off camera but you put the marking center line you put double-sided tape you tape it and just bring in the two sides just the two sides and then we're going to sew down at what she says a seam allowance and then you're going to cut it into fourths okay and uh there you go because it says on the fold so i'll get that done and then come back and uh we'll work on um putting the strap connectors on so I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the strap done and I cut it in four equal parts. And you want to take your exterior main panel top and lay it down. And I put some double sided tape to make sure you get it directional. I had to redo it again. And then you're going to line it up in between the lines and put it on the edge of your. Um, piece here and then we're going to set that aside and then we're going to go over the sewing machine and sew this down and you just you know stitch it right here at the seam allowance and then you're going to get your exterior main panel bottom and grab one of those pieces and then you're going to put the right sides together sew it at the seam allowance all the way across and then you're going to flip it up and um, top stitch and I'll show you all that when we get there okay so I'll meet you over at the sewing machine okay we're just going to tack this down don't forget to hold your threads And then all I do is I just pull it forward and then do it again. Don't forget to back stitch. Okay, I'll trim that off. And I'll 
I'll cut our little threads here. Because this won't show. I'm going to cut the back. I do have a trash can over there. You probably can see it. Okay, then we're going to take right sides together. You want to make sure that the curve is at the top of that piece. Matching these up. And we're going to clip along here and then sew at the seam allowance. Hold your threads. Okay, so we've got that part done. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to pull this up and pull this down and then you're gonna top stitch all the way across. You can finger press it as you go. Do you wanna top stitch on the lining part? Okay, so we've got that done, and now we're going to go, I'm going to put the interfacing on the back of it. Um, again, I'm using fleece. <coughs> Excuse me. You can use um, Decaville Light, but she does recommend the uh, iron-on fleece. So I'm going to go take that over to the iron and get that done, and I'll meet you back over at the table. Okay, so I uh, applied the fleece to the back of the panel and now I'm going to flip it over and we're going to add two of the rings okay and the way that she wants you to do it is you're going to put some double-sided tape just a small piece and I want to remind everybody though when you do interfacing or anything <clears throat> keep it out of your seam allowance and make sure it goes below the uh, drop line. Okay, you want everything to stay below the drop line and that should center everything up nicely. So you're going to put these pieces here. Okay, you're gonna bring your rings and put them on. Take this off and then you're going to lower it and line it up. Hope everybody can see that. Line it up just to the top of your lining piece and press it down because then you're going to add two rivets that's what holds it down there's no sewing you're going to use your rivets so put your rings on there and keep them out of the tape line it up press it down just to the edge and then you're going to mark it and install the rivets kind of use your own judgment after you pull up the, there we go, the ring, 
and uh, probably looks like half, less than half an inch when I did it before. Let me see if I can get my ruler here. Yeah, it's about a quarter of an inch up from there is where I would measure and then split the difference. So I'm going to put the rivets in and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the rivets on and with the uh, fusible interfacing fleece here, I didn't need to add any extra stabilizer. So I've got those on. Now we're gonna bring back the pocket and uh, I hope you all made your little center marks, you know, cause we need them, okay? And you're gonna line them up, center marks, line everything up. You're gonna clip it really, really well. And you're gonna take it to the machine and sew it at the seam allowance. Okay, so we'll clip that first here and turn that a little bit. And it is cold here, by the way. We got 25 and a half inches of snow in one week. So this has been kind of fun sewing on days like this. Okay, so that's what this pocket looks like. I'm going to continue to clip around here and then I'll take it over to the sewing machine and we'll get it sewn on at the seam allowance she has in the pattern. Okay, we're going to sew around here at the seam allowance. And hold your threads and back stitch. And just sew right around the edge. Okay, clip your threads close, and there we go. We have the little pocket. That cute? That one does not get a magnetic snap. The back one will, because we're going to go back over the table, and we're going to work on the back piece now. Okay, we're going to set this one aside, and you're going to get your other exterior uh, pocket, both pieces right sides together and you're going to sew it at the seam allowance it's in the pattern and then you're going to put little snips in it fold it over top stitch and then we will be putting in the um male part of the uh, snap okay so i'm going to clip that and i'll just take it over the sewing machine and then come back and we'll go from there Okay, so I sewed the exterior pockets together, clipped them, turned it over, and top stitched it. Now we're going to add the male part of the magnetic snap for the back pocket. And you'll need your uh, uh, pattern piece because right below there, there's the mark you're going to need to make. And please make sure you only go through the lining. Do not go through the exterior when you mark all this, okay? And when you cut your material, make sure that you only go through the lining. So I'm gonna make my little mark. Double check, make sure everything's lined up. Sorry about my birds. Okay, so then we made the center mark and now you're gonna take your washer, find the center and this is heat, a heat pin. And you just have to take your iron and it comes right off. I love this. Most of these marks that I have made when I was talking to you about the drop, um, drop line, I used in a pin, an actual pin, uh, because when you start, you know, putting this on with the steam, that would come off. So this is just an ink pin. So just note to self. So, okay, now we're gonna open this up get my seam ripper just put my hand behind it here and then you're just gonna 
give it a little cut and a little cut. All right, again, it's the male part. I'll stick that through there. Okay. And then I like to get a little bit of um, either Decaville Heavy or Decaville Light, which, sorry, excuse me, in the camera. I've got some Decaville Light right here. And then you just, again, mark it anywhere. Okay, take your seam ripper and put it through there. Okay, place it over that. Might have to, no, nope, that seems to fit okay. And then put that in there. And then either way you want to fold it. Most of the time I like to fold it outward because it seems to tighten it down. And then I'm going to get some tape. I'll have to come across, sorry. Almost everything's at arm's length. Mm, get some duct, duct tape. My birds are talking to each other out there. Probably saying, let me out. It's too cold. All right. So there we go. So now we have the male part. Okay. And so then now what we're going to do is the same thing that we did. Well, we put that aside for right now because now what we have to do is what we did before. Make the strap. Get our little strap connectors on there. Using the exterior main panel piece and the exterior uh, main panel Bottom. So we got the top and the bottom we're going to be pulling together and then you're going to go back and do the exact same thing. Make your mark or line them up, your other two pieces. Okay, and so take that, line it up at the bottom in between the two lines. Okay. that's lined up over there at the bottom go over and you know stitch those down and then take right sides together you should mark your center points if you want to before this clip it and then sew so sew both of these down and sew the seam allowance on this and then flip it back up and top stitch it like we did before all right, so I'm going to get that done. You don't need to watch me do that twice because um, you can refer back to the other uh, part of the video if you want to. But I'll get this done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I repeated the steps that she has from 11 to 17 to install, put the uh, fusible fleece back on below the line, put my rivets in. So now we're going to put the other part of the magnetic snap. Again, we're working on the back. So we're going to take this piece here, and then that's why I said just kind of wait. And then you place it and make your mark. I know it's like, what? This is weird. Okay, so we make our mark, and then we're going to take the <laughs> other washer, take off the cover, the other protective cover okay take our pin and make our mark and then cut through this is for the female part again for the back pocket Okay, and then place her in there. Okay, and again, get some Decaville. Well, you know what? With the front, with the there um, fleece, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just taking that, bend it over, and then get my 
little duct tape. I used to have white. So I went through all that. And then it got expensive. And my husband had this, so I just decided to use this. Nobody's going to see it anyways but us. Okay. All right, so we've got that taped. And then that's ready to go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to line up. I didn't put my notches in, but we're going to put our little notches in. Okay. Get them all lined up here. Find the center point. Oh, that's coming together so cute. And then the same with this piece here. Line everything up. Just put a small notch in this one. All right, and we're gonna take this. Oh, see, and the magnet lines it up anyways. Okay, <laughs> pretty cool. All right, so then we're gonna sew this down at the seam allowance, clip it and take it over to the sewing machine and sew it down. And then, um, I think, oh, then we'll be working on our flap next. So, okay, so I'll just take it to the sewing machine. And uh, you've already seen it done, so I'll just get it done and bring it back and we'll go from there. Okay, we're gonna be working on the flap. So you need your pieces A and B flap. And um, the instructions say to, uh, uh, put the fleece on B and on my other bag I did put it on A but I think and I did mention that I was going to but with this um, I'm working with here I don't want it too thick because I'm gonna have to come up with a way to make sure everything sticks together so I don't want too much to hinder that so then all you do is you put your pieces together now if you're using vinyl and you don't mind the open edge then you're just gonna sew around at the seam allowance. Um, if you're using um, uh, cotton, she does where you, when you do on the pattern, there's a, a cut line, you wanna cut on that extra little bit and then you sew that down and turn it inside out. Well, I'm not gonna do that, but she does have the directions for that. So we're gonna clip along here and then sew, and then once you sew around the seam allowance, then you're going to trim it, uh, what she says too, in there. So we will get this clipped up and take it over to the machine and sew it. Now she does say you can use double-sided tape, you can glue it. Um, she gives a lot of great instructions in there and gives the choice of how you wanna do it. So I am gonna do it this way and just clip it and sew around it. And then, um, I'm hoping that's the right way to do because yeah because once i sew it then i have to cut the hole for this to come through for this to come through and then this will be my turn lock so it's really stinking cute isn't it look at that i am so proud of that design i can't believe i did that but anyways and then had it printed so i can make a bag out of it Okay, so I'm gonna go work on the lid. Take you over to the machine and uh, we'll finish sewing this bad boy up. Okay, all right, so meet you over at the machine. Okay, we're gonna start sewing at the seam allowance all the way around. Don't forget to hold your threads and do a back stitch and let's get started.
Okay, so we got that done and now we're gonna trim it down to, I believe it's about an eighth. And just cut around it. And now if you want, you could edge coat this, which I just might do. It would really make the sides pop. Okay, so now we have our flap, and then when you flip it up, then it will be upside right as well. Okay, let's go over to the table and see what our next step is. Okay, the next step is <clears throat> we are going to uh, cut out the center part here for the um, turn lock. Um, I originally bought two of them, and it comes with it comes as red lipstick. Um, but because of this pink bag, I took acrylic pink paint and I painted it and then I put a top coat of nail polish, kind of still give it a shine because red won't go with this. So hopefully that'll work. But what we're going to do now is cut out the center <coughs> and, uh, see if we can get this to, to fit. So you're going to take your pattern piece and mark it. The female lay it down and find the center and then you do your turn lock um, according to the directions and I'm gonna cut this out uh, let's see excuse me okay so I have this little finger cutter which is really cool okay I use it for scrapbooking I've been doing a little bit of scrapbooking so we're just gonna take that and hopefully I'm doing this the right way because it didn't come with any instructions. Go figure. Some of these things you get just do not come with instructions and you have to spend a couple, couple hours trying to figure out what's the best way of doing this. So let's cut this out. And hopefully I'll get my finger in the middle of it. really sharp I can make a couple of passes that's what we'll do Let's see where the okay we got the top part done you can see you got that now we got to try to oh here we go Put the corner there and the corner there all right we got that part now we got to get the interfacing out of there so just take your time like I said I'm hoping this is going to work I might edge coat inside I'm going to put some glue on the inside is what I figured to hold that okay I'm going to take my scissors and trim some of that out of there. Get some of that fuzz out. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. Looks like I cut it crooked. Let's see what it looks like when it goes on. Well, did pretty good. It's a little, it is a little crooked. Oh, my OCD is kicking in. So I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. And just, I don't know if this will work. Just give it a nice little, little more of a line here and just take my time. Let's do little by little. There. Yeah, that's better. 
yeah okay I just needed a little piece cut out still looks crooked okay but I think it's gonna work there's the front okay so now the next thing I'm gonna do is take some uh, three-in-one glue and glue it and then um, I'll be back Okay, so I got that done and we're gonna continue working on the flap. And I did edge coat it and let it dry. And um, it's not very fancy, um, but it is what it is. So then now we're gonna take our exterior back, the one with the pocket and the magnet, and you're going to fold along this line because that's where the placement of the uh, flap's going to be. So we're going to get our little marking pin here and I've kind of clipped it and then creased it. You can, you can kind of see where it needs to be. And we're just gonna draw a line. Oh, whoops, glad it's a heating pin. All the way across to the other dot and then take that off of there, okay. And then you're gonna take some double-sided tape on the flap and, oh, I think we'll use an eight, eight of an inch. And you're going to just put some double-sided tape there. Okay. And we're gonna fold it down. Okay, and then we're going to attach the flap, the mark that we have, and center it. And then we're going to put double-sided tape on here again. And then you're going to place it between the two lines. I'm going to turn it towards me a little bit because I feel like, there we go. And you put it between the two dots in the line there. And then press the double-sided tape. And then you're going to make two row of stitches, which she has in the pattern, and then another one. And then we're going to put two rivets in there. So now I'm going to meet you over to the sewing machine. Okay, you want to make sure you hold your threads and you don't want to back stitch. You want to be able to pull your threads through. So that looks good. And uh, hold your threads and let's go. Oh. I'll be able to get that out of there. Don't backstitch. <laughs> okay, leave your threads kind of long so you can pull them through. And then we're going to sew again the seam allowance that she has in the pattern. Don't backstitch. Loop to self. Okay. And then you're just going to pull your threads behind, pull them through, tie them off. And 
one's a little tighter, but that's okay. Let's take a minute to work it through. Okay. Oop. Didn't need that many. There we go. Oop. <laughs> okay. Just want the first stitch. Okay, so I'm going to tie these off, and then we're going to go back to the table and put some rivets in it. Okay, so now it's time to put the piping on. Now, I already did one, and um, I used my piping foot for my cylinder arm. Look how close it gets. I'll show it to you, but I mean, it just it's just beautiful. And it, you can order it for the cylinder arm that I'm using to put piping on. So to prepare it, she has the piece. And um, I put uh, double-sided tape and the t uh, cording down there. Now I'm going to put uh, one eighth inch double-sided tape on the edge here. Sorry, hope you can see. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way down. And then we're going to bring the two sides up and then clip it and then we'll put it on the exteriors now you want to get your one pattern piece here the exterior main panel and it has two little red lines and it says right here start and stop for the piping so i just laid it on the pattern Moved it over just a little bit and made a mark. I usually wait and make my marks when I need them. That's how I do it. Everybody else does it different. But then you just scoot it over and you make your mark on that side. And that will be your start and stop. Okay, so then, again, just take the double-sided tape off. Bring up your edges. And then get it all the way around and you don't have to clip <laughs> i had to clip my other one because i let it sit overnight so the tape kind of came off but i might not have to double clip here just line these up here we'll speed through this part And then she gives you plenty. Oh, oh wait. Okay, so we've got that all all done. And she gives you plenty. So you want to start clipping. Take a little bit up, okay? and clip but clip right below right below the line because once you start it we're going to move it down even more because you're going to pull it off to the side where that line is and that's where you're going to start sewing so i'm going to clip it off camera and then we'll meet back over at the sewing machine she does have a video tutorial on how to do piping as well in the pattern Okay, so as you can see, I've got it all clipped around here, and this is my piping foot. It kind of looks like a, the regular foot, but there's a, um, little indentations on both of these pieces. So what you're going to do is put your piece underneath, and then make sure that you look for that line. Okay, because see the, the little line there? You want to just pull it slightly across. But you got to get your machine set up first. It's kind of, and pull that about there. Because you also got to pull your thread, hold your threads. So it takes a lot to get it started. There we go. And what you're going to do is line this big piece right on top of your piping. Right on top. So we're going to put that down like that and get it started. Hold your threads, back stitch, and uh, off we go. Remember to keep 
this lined up on the top of the piping. And that's all you have to do. Okay, you want to start looking for that line up top. I have it clipped. So there it is. So I'm going to run this just a little bit more. And there's different sizes of this foot. Um, the cord I'm using is 5 30 seconds. So that's the size that this piping foot is. Uh, there's different sizes for different size cords. Okay, now we're going to gently just pull it over here. Let it run off the edge. Back stitch. And there you go. Piping is done. Now it does kind of smash down your cords a little bit, but you can always fluff them up. All right, cut that off of there. And there you go. Nice piping, real close. Makes it stand out. And then you just, depending on the cord, this cord I use is Amazon but you just kind of reshape it a little bit and it'll be fine. It'll lay nice. It's got weird netting in the cord, but look how pretty that is and how close and how simple that was. Just follow around the edge. Like I said, there's different sizes. It's fantastic. I just, I love it. I, it's made piping so much more fun because it's easier to put on there. I mean, it's just, it's perfect. So then what you're gonna do is Turn your piece over and trim off the excess right along the edge. Okay, and there we go. Piping's done. Now we're going to go over and we're going to put the gussets on. Okay, it's time to work on the gussets and I put some fusible fleece on the back. Uh, per the manufacturer's instructions. And then we're gonna put the right sides together of the smaller end, opposite of the drop line. Make sure you have your drop line on both pieces. And we're going to sew it together. I'm not gonna have you watch that. I'm just explaining what we're gonna do. Then once you sew it, you're gonna open up the seams and sew the seams down. And then we're going to start uh, clipping it to our pieces, our main pieces. So. Let me get this sewed and then we'll get started on making the gusset. Okay, so um, I told you guys to take your two gusset pieces and sew them together and then sew down the seam. And for the last <laughs> two hours, I don't know what's going on, but I ironed on the fusible fleece like I did on the back of this. And I guess being waterproof canvas and then this uh, marine vinyl, it didn't seem to bother it. But as a, I don't know if anybody's had this problem, but it kept, it stretched. I don't know if heating it, because this was the first line I made and I had to keep trying it on and trying it on and I'm moving it and moving and moving the stitches. It was the craziest thing. So I cut out another piece, another two pieces, sewed it. I glued on the uh, fusible fleece glued it on and it fits perfectly so that was the weirdest thing so i don't know if it's this vinyl um because the marine vinyl it didn't do anything to it uh but putting it on this vinyl here i've never had that happen i've made hundreds of bags but it literally it kept stretching it and then when i measured it to the uh pattern piece let me grab that real quick and show you and then when I m measured it to the pattern piece, okay, here's the top. Now it didn't stretch it by much, but it still stretched it enough that it threw it off. So heat, note to self, heat on some vinyl 
it just does not work and it stretched it and I, I it's just the craziest thing so moving forward um <laughs> i did just cut out two pieces i glued it on and now we're going to go over and sew it down at the um seam allowance she has she suggests using either a zipper foot or a piping foot and i kept my piping foot on so i'm going to go and sew that and we'll meet at the sewing machine Okay, so we're going to start up at the top, holding your threads, uh, go by, and then go by the feel. If you have a piping foot, it would be great. I can't believe how much nicer having that piping foot works. Uh, go ahead and back stitch, and uh, then we're just going to sew around. Okay, let's see how that looks. Don't forget to back stitch. Oh, look how pretty. Oh my gosh. Look how nice that is with that piping foot. Wow. That is pretty. You don't see your stitches and it went around real nice. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go and put the other side on and do the same thing. Okay, so I got the other one clipped on. You wanna make sure you keep your flap out of the way and kind of the same way we did with the other one. If I can get it to lay flat. There we go. My hand might get in the way and I do apologize. Hold your threads. And let's get started. Ah, uh, get away from me. Mm. Okay, it slid off because I'm trying to be so careful for you to see and I'm not feeling my way around. So I apologize if my hand's getting in the way, but I've got to get this straight or it won't look nice, so bear with me. It is what it is. There we go.
Okay, watch out for your flap. Back stitch. And then let's see how that was a little bit of a a fight with the oh see it went off here. It went off. So we will just go back and I will fix that. Sounds like my bobbin's about ready to run out too. So let's get that. It's kind of hard. Uh, and what ran off is because my um, rivet got stuck on the plate here. So I was fighting it. But if I turn it inside out, it will show that that's off of there. So I'm going to go back and then just make sure my rivet is not stuck again. So this is how you fix things. I knew I was fighting with something. I couldn't figure it out, and then all of a sudden it gave, and I was like, oh, yeah, the dreaded rivet. We want our stitches to be, see, it's just about ready to get caught again. <laughs> Not this time. I got you now. See how that looks. Well, kind of looks like it did the same thing. Thought I caught it. Oops. Well, let's see how it looks on the outside. If I have to come back in and I'll fix it. If something else is there. Let's see what we got. Because now it's time to turn the bag inside right or inside out. But that looks, yeah, just a little bit. So let's turn the bag inside right out. It is very flexible material. And I love it because it's going to be a drop in lining. Yay. Okay. Well, I don't see it, so that must have fixed it. If it's on this side. No, it looks good here. Okay, I guess we're, we're okay. Going back over, it kind of helped. So I'll just twist it up there, and look how cute that is. And then put that little clasp in there. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Now, is that a Barbie bag or what? <laughs> Didn't mean for it to be, but... Alrighty, so let's go over the table and uh, go to our next step. Okay, so the next step is going to be working on our lining, but I wanted to show you what the clasp looks like. Just pull that out, push that down, and it hooks to the chain here. So then when you want to get in the bag, you just open it up, and this drops down. Get in your bag, close it back up, and slide it on in. Isn't that just cute? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is adorable. All right, I just wanted to show you that, and here's the back of it. And now the next step is going to be the lining, and then we're almost done with this bag. Plus the straps, but that's not hard. We've already made those. Okay, now we're going to work on the lining. You're going to get your two lining panels, and then you're going to get your, um, what do you call this piece? The lining contrast bands. And you want to make sure that your angle is like this when you put it on and make sure you have your drop line mark on there and we're going to go sew it um i'm just going to sew this because a lot of you already know how to make lining but uh i'll still show some steps but i'm going to do two pockets on this and so i'm going to go sew this then you flip it over and you top stitch it like normal and then we'll go to the next step Okay, so we're going to do the zipper overlay. Um, I've already prepared one of them. This is what it looks like. Really cute. And uh, so now you're going to get your lining pieces. We already sewed the contrast band on, top stitched it. Find your center. And then you want to find your center and make sure it's directional. And she has measurements in the pattern. And you take off the 
double-sided tape I put quarter inch around it okay and um, put it kind of in between I kind of laid it in between here and we're gonna press that down and this is a good time if you want to put a, one of your bag tags on it I just lift up kind of the corner line it up here press it down because what we're gonna do is take it over to the sewing machine and just sew on the outside okay don't want to this one doesn't want to lay flat for me there we go okay and you just want to sew around the outside edge okay and while we're here i'm going to show you how to put the zipper on a zipper pull zipper pull on the zipper hello um i always make a mark a straight line across because then i know when those marks meet up then my zipper's on straight. Uh, some people can do it. I don't even attempt it anymore. I just have a habit of marking it. You pop it open, slide it into your zipper jig, and see, you can tell that it went crooked, if you can see that. So then we just pull it out. Like I said, I'm, if I don't have that there, and now we know, see, perfect straight, and my zipper's on. Okay, so I wanted to show you that why I had the zipper jig right there. All right, so now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. We're going to top stitch around just the outside. Okay, so hold your threads. I have my top stitch at six. Um, I do most of my top stitching in six, and then I do most of the sewing in um, five stitch length. So we just start there and don't back stitch. You want to hold your threads and then you want to pull them through. It gives a nicer finish. Okay, you want to usually go one, maybe two stitches past, and then pull it through, tie it off, and we'll go back to the table and go to the next step. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I have my iron on, so I'm just going to go and steam that little spot off real quick. Just give it a little, there we go. Okay, took that right off of there. So now we're going to take our scissors and we are going to fold this gently and just make a little snip. Okay, and then you're going to cut. Now we gotta be careful, make sure your scissors go under the zipper overlay, about halfway between. Turn it around. And do the same thing, real careful that you don't cut your zipper overlay. Okay, and then you're gonna flip it over and cut it up to that tape. That's why I say halfway, because then you can make sure you get all of that off of there. Okay, so now when you flip it over, you don't see any of it. So now we're gonna prepare the zipper pocket itself. So like I said, I'm doing two of them. So you want your uh, pocket piece face up, and then I'm going to take a clip and just clip the end here. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna just go and sew across that real quick. 
Okay, so I went and I sewed the end of it, of the zipper, so the zipper won't fall off. I usually, usually use a clip, but I noticed when I did the other pocket that it just split so bad on this. So I want my end to be closed. So you're gonna clip your zipper, the edge. You can even move it over just a little bit on the edge because then you can take this and pull this off so you can get a flat edge because you all know that the zipper will make a little bump in it. So this way you get a flat edge, okay? So the zipper is right side up and the lining is right side up. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna base this on. Then we're gonna take this end, bring it to the back side of the zipper, lining up your edges, okay? Lining up your edges and clipping that on. And we can sew both sides at the same time. So remember, you flip your zipper up and bring the right side to the back side of that zipper. So, and all in all, it's the back sides, even though it's upright, to the right side, okay? All right, so now we're gonna take it over and like I said, we're gonna baste it and uh, come back and do the next step. Okay, so I sewed the zipper on, okay? I did flat, sewed on both sides. So now I want my zipper to go to the left. So I'm gonna grab the top here and that lays flat. But when I put my zipper overlay, this seems to you know bounce up all the time. So this is what I do. You can do it or not. It's extra double-sided tape. And then I end up removing it later. So it lines, this will line up, but I don't know. It just makes a nicer zipper for me. So I just put a little piece, just right, I use the, uh, one eighth inch. This comes in so handy for a lot of things, this size. Okay, so I just put that there. So we can just lay that flat and it comes off real easy because it doesn't get sewed down. All right, and then make sure that this is laying flat. And there, now you got two flat edges that you're working with to lay this on top, okay? Because I just, drives me crazy. So now we're gonna put double-sided tape again, eighth inch, double-sided on both sides. Okay. And these are just little tricks I've learned to do for me. Again, you can use them or whatever works for you ladies. Um, I just like the way that this will lay down without fighting because you're fighting against waterproof canvas and you all know that it, it's pretty stiff. So you're going to take the top part off and I usually will line up the seams that I sewed around. Okay, I got to go a little. And then I line that up with the uh, sides of the pocket. Okay, and then I kind of just pull that up line it over the zipper in the middle here in the middle here and then press down okay and then pull that up and then just let it kind of fall and press it down okay and see that's so much easier instead of fighting with that because then after i sew it then you can just pull this back up in fact, you can even do it now if you want. I know it might be a waste, but I'll tell you. So I just pull it back up. Okay. And then scrape it a little bit and it just comes off like gum. You might have to have some nails, but... <laughs> and there you go. And then once you lay this back down... You still have your pocket lined up and you've already got your zipper. 
Okay, then the next thing is you want to make sure that, don't pull that up all the way, kind of keep it down because you want to lay your, because you want to cut this now. So you want to make sure that that's going to lay flat and cut it and open it up because now we're going to sew the inside and you have to have both pockets open, okay? All right, so now we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and then don't forget to push your zipper through. Don't do what I do and I forgot on the other one. But I like to kind of keep it closed till I get up there. So hopefully I won't forget. So let's go over to the sewing machine and show you how to do that. Okay, so we're making sure that both sides are open, that my zipper's not in the way as of right now. Get everything lined up. Make sure your stitch length is back at six. All right. Everything out of the way. Don't back stitch. Okay. I should get a magnet that says, don't forget to hold your threads. Okay, one or two stitches are past that. Clip long threads, pull them behind, and let's tie them off. Okay, there we go. Give me a quick minute to tie that off. And then, uh, then we're gonna sew the sides down because now we're done with that part. And we don't need to go back to the table for that. I don't know if you can see this, but you know how to <laughs> you know how to tie a knot. Uh, all right, so got that done. Okay, so now everything lays flat. And see when you took that piece of tape out, because if you didn't take that tape out, this would bunch up a little bit and it would be uneven again. So even taking that little piece of tape out after you uh, get your zipper laid out, then it lays this flat. Um, and so now we're going to sew the sides and the bottom because, again, this is a drop-in lining. So you want to pull this back a little bit. I know you're gonna have some tape there, but that's okay. And then the seam allowance is in the pattern. You can clip it if you want. Hold your threads, back stitch, and sew it up. You can see that. Okay. <laughs> Clip that off of there. Put the other threads. And there you go. We have a zipper pocket. I'm gonna go over and then trim this close to both sides here. See, we don't need to trim that unless you wanna trim that down. It doesn't get in the way. Um, but trim that down and then uh, now it's time to put the gusset on. Okay, now that we got both of our linings done, the next step is to get your shoulder strap connectors. And we're gonna put a piece of tape at the bottom, get your lining gusset contrast and line it up because you're gonna want to do the same thing that we did before is you put it on there Take the tape, line it up at the bottom in between the lines, and then we're gonna go and sew that. Oops, I need it for the other piece. Sew that on. Okay, take the tape. Hopefully. Make sure if it's uh, directional that it will fold down 
because you're going to be folding it down forward and then put a rivet in it. So we'll make sure that's all lined up. Press that down. Take it over and sew it at seam allowance. Then we're going to get the gusset. Make sure you make your center marks on it. And then um, we will take this, sew it, and then we will turn it up and top stitch it and go from there. Okay, so we are going to sew that. Don't forget to hold your threads. We're just basically basting this on. And then we take our lining piece, and like I said, mark your centers. Not that you need them right now, but and then we're going to clip that. And I need to go see. I apologize. I forgot what the seam allowance was. Okay, it's the usual. Okay. So we're going to do that. Sew it at the seam allowance and flip it up and then sew down the... I'm still at five though. I'm Sew everything down, then I'll top stitch it. My six stitch length. that and then we can just finger press the uh, lining down Oop, cut them a little too short now <laughs> okay again finger press Okay, so that takes care of our lining, starting of our lining gussets. Got the work done on that for our shoulder strap. 
I'm going to take it back over the table and uh, pr probably, I think at this point, we're going to put the D-rings in. Yep. And the rivets. Okay, so I took it to the table. I folded the pieces down. I put uh, double-sided tape to hold it. Put my rivets in. Put a little bit of foam to help support on both sides. Now we're going to take our small pieces, our small ends, I should say, match them up, and then we're going to sew the seam allowance. And move that clip up a little bit. I'm going to change my stitch length. Okay, and she has the seam allowance in the pattern. Threads, open up the seam, flatten it, okay, whoop, stay over there, and Okay, now we're going to take it and we are going to put the gusset on to our lining panels. I'll meet you over at the table. Okay, so you need to find your center mark on your lining. Line up the center of this bottom seam where you sewed your gussets together and start clipping around. I put about two or three on each side. And then I take the top and I match it up to the top of there. Make sure your seam's kind of aligned. Start clipping it. And then you're just going to go all the way around. If you have to clip, clip on your around the corner here. Clip a little bit on your gusset, not on the lining, but on your gusset. And so I'm going to clip and get this side ready. Um, then when you get this all fitted in, she wants you to sew, uh, there's two seam allowances. So you're going to start off with the first one till about down to here. And then you're going to taper in all the way around the bag and then go back out to the original seam allowance. So double check that when you get started. So I'm going to get this all pinned up. I'm sorry, clipped up. And uh, I'll meet you over at the sewing machine when I get this ready to go. Okay, so I got it all clipped. You need a lot of clips to hold them. Remember to start at the beginning of her seam allowance and then taper in, probably starting here. You know, you just want enough past the drop line to have when you fold the seam back, it folds nicely. So we're gonna scoot that down. I have my stitch length at five. 
don't forget to back stitch and hold your threads and just take your time i know i speed it up through here but who wants to watch all that Okay, I don't know, looks pretty good on the outside. Let's see what it looks like from the inside. Okay, so then we'll just do the same exact thing for the other side. And uh, here we go, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, looks pretty good little puckering but I'm going to trim it up so also when you trim it um, you don't want to trim this off you start about here trim down around and do the same thing come up and then just trim right off here you don't want to trim this part down so I'm going to put the other piece on and then um, I think it'll be time to fold the drop line down and start putting it in our bag and finishing it up Okay, so I've got both gussets on and I trimmed it. And then I also trimmed a little bit more up here to get that out um, so it won't be so bulky there. So I just gave it a little snip all the way around. Now you wanna put your double-sided tape on. And I tried on the outside here, this worked okay. You know, you push it and you just go around. I used a quarter inch uh, double-sided tape. And, but in the inside of this one, I did it in sections because I don't want to fight with the roll of tape. And just did a section and a section, you know, and just pressed it all down. Make sure you press your seams down and bring the tape around it. So then the next thing we're going to do is take off the tape and fold this down to the draw line. So I'll take this side off as well. And just take your time and just fold it. I hope you can see that. We need to bring you a little closer here. There we go. And you just press it down up to the, the draw line. And you do that with both pieces, the exterior and the lining, folding your seams down. If you have um, a roller, probably be great after you get it all taped. She suggests to roll it down, okay? And we're just gonna fold that to the draw line and press around it. Pulling off the tape. And be careful when you put these pieces together to make sure that your um, hardware that's on the lining is out of the way when you put these together. I noticed that when I started putting this on that it can get kind of close, so just be aware. Okay, we're just gonna fold that all the way around. That is some good double-sided tape. I get mine from the LAC. Everybody has so many different ways of pronouncing that. I think it's, yeah, we'll All right, bring your seam down. Press it. Like I said, just take your time. Line it up. Oop. Got a 
the seam doesn't want to line up. Okay. Pull that up a little bit. Reposition it. Okay. All right, so see now we've got that done. And then what I do take, for me, what I did with the other bag is I took a pair of these that you use for your key fobs and I squished down the seams real good. In fact, I just kind of take it and go all the way around my bag, sorry. And then just take it and put it in the seams and squish really hard and you might have to do it a couple times especially when you put your bag together because it could loosen up and then once you put your bag together do it again so we've got that that helps helps it out a lot and then i just took this with this because i have a plastic coating over it and then just kind of made that my ro roller and kind of just rolled over all the seams. Just make sure that's all pressed down pretty good. You gotta use what you've got. And I found this worked out pretty good. Help press the seams flatter. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side. And I think we're too close now, so I'm sorry about that. I just did it section by section, but you can take all the tape off you want, or she even says you can glue it if you want. So we're just going to fold this down inside to the edge. I love drop-in linings. I know some don't. I've heard they, I don't know why, but they, they don't like drop-in linings. So let me finish that up and then I will be back with you. Okay, so I got that all folded down, this all folded down. Now what you're gonna do is take your seams and match it to your seam and clip it all the way around. And then again, before you sew it, maybe give it a good, a good press with that. So we'll just start clipping. And then you're going to top stitch uh, what she says in the pattern. I'm going to use my narrow foot still. So then we'll go to this seam here. We'll clip it. And see, there's the hardware. So make sure it's folded down and even the strap pulled down a little bit, I would say, because I can feel it when I'm trying to put this clip in. So it is up there. So get all your seams lined up. This is my nervous part. I was, I don't know. Well, so far that looks good, but it's like, I hope it fits. If you wonder sometimes when you put these bags together, if you're gonna have too much or not enough didn't do the seam allowance right. <laughs> I've had that happen. All right, it looks like it fits pretty good. So I'd like to push mine down just a hair. And I know they say do uh, like one eighth seam allowance to get it right up. But I kind of do a quarter in between. With my uh, narrow foot, it really helps. Again, you can get a narrow foot, a really cool zipper foot for the 1341 cylinder arm um, and even the piping foot. That's just exciting there. It just made that piping so, oh, so easy. So it looks like we have a winner. Make sure you can look at it, not see the, the lining part of it. And it's not a big thing if you do see it a little bit. That's what makes it unique and handmade. Not every piece is perfect. 
we strive for perfection. All right. Oh, that looks nice. And then we'll put the handles on it and Lining in there. Look how nice that fits in there. You can see it it's real nice. Don't forget to trim around the edge. All right, let's finish this up. And we'll take it over the sewing machine and top stitch it. Sorry if I keep getting out of camera view. All right, that looks really cute. All right, I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, guess we're ready. I'm going to start in the back and I'm going to pull my threads through so I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm gonna remove a couple of these clamps and slide my bag under grab my thread. I don't know if I mentioned back at six. My top stitching and here we go. Okay, makes me always nervous doing the top stitching. Keep your strings long so you can tie it off. I'm gonna tie it off in front. Let's check it out. Everything caught. Stitches look good. Stitches look real good. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. Okay, I'm gonna try it, tie off my threads and then we're gonna put the straps on. Okay, here she is. I uh, put the straps on and I riveted. Um, you just take them about an inch from the ring and bring them down, fold it over. I punched holes and put my rivets in and I put my latch in. Isn't that great? Look at that little latch. And it hooks to there so you don't lose it. Okay, and then the back's done with the shorter handles. I think she just turned out real pretty. And then I made the uh, adjustable strap that you use the D-rings in. And uh, there you go. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, um, please don't hesitate to ask. I love to help and answer questions. And if I forgot something, I'll be glad to explain it. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to purchase this bag, you can go to my website, probably be on in about a week. I have to take pictures and load them all up and everything. So um, you can go to my website at bagsbybeckymac.com. And I thank you very much and you have a fantastic day.